Hello, aloha. Welcome to Politics for the People. I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. This uh, weekly talk show is uh, to review and discuss important issues of our time and, and in our news. Today's topic is Putin's nuclear blackmail. Our panel is here to take on this discussion and do some unpacking of its meaning and, and its possibilities um, for potentially ending. And um, I'd like to welcome them now. Uh, we have here to discuss Jay Fidel, welcome to the panel. And, and Tim Apicella, welcome to our panel for this show today. Great. Well, let's get right on to the topic, which uh, may sound a little bit complicated, um, the Putin's nuclear blackmail. So let's let's do a little bit of defining of that um, and making sure we all understand uh, the topic before we start the um, analysis <laughs> and review. So, Jay, Jay, what what is Russia doing uh, by using nuclear blackmail? on Ukraine and the world. They're threatening nuclear war. And uh, Putin mm, tries to do that in order to get them to back down and be afraid of him. And uh, he's floated a number of things like that. You know, we, we heard about, uh, you know, weapons of mass destruction, in the form of chemical weapons and biological weapons. And it comes from him. Sometimes it comes from you know, his really interesting charade about saying, well, Zelensky, Zelensky said he was going to do this. And what he really means is, I'm going to do this. He raises the specter. He raised the specter of nuclear war early on when he said, don't forget, Russia is a nuclear power. And indeed, it is nuclear power. They, they spent inordinate amounts of money. Um, you know, if they spent that money on their own economy, they'd be happier now, believe me. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, the question, and it goes to, you know, the, mm, the, the, the Polish MiGs, you know, that, that people were talking about to go, you know, to, to fly a uh, no-fly zone over Ukraine. And, and it goes to any kind of ex ex escalation by the West. But you notice that, um, you, you notice that the United States, uh, Blinken and uh, Lloyd Austin, they're, uh, they're, they're, it's different now. They're saying, we're, we're going we're gonna to give weapons. Don't try to scare us. Uh, we got your number. We understand, you know, what you're about, and uh, we aren't going to be affected by your you stamping your feet like some, you mm -hmm. know, two year old. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really important. There's a there's sort of global geopolitical psychology involved. Um, we didn't we didn't really have his number when he threatened a nuclear war in the first place, but we know more about him now, and we know more about ourselves. We know more about how the coalition functions or doesn't in, in some instances. Um, and I think they're totally right, um, the, you know, to the extent that um, uh, Blinken and uh, Austin and, and, and Biden um, have, have taken these recent steps. They're totally, they now understand, you know, I've told you before that in the practice of law, when you're doing litigation and settlement practice, if you will, when you're doing the do si do, I mean, people in the community in general, even if they've been involved in litigation, don't really understand what happens when you put a pathological lawyer or client on the other side. You have to treat them differently. You know, the first step is everything in writing. Second step is don't take them seriously uh, and uh, make your own moves that will avoid getting intimidated. Um, and there are a lot of lawyers uh, who, who do both sides of that. That's the way it is. The good news is that uh, you say blackmail, and it was blackmail, but Query, is it still blackmail? Um, you know, my own view is that, hey, you want to stamp your feet, stamp your feet. But we are not going to be affected by that. We don't take you seriously. Sorry. Because, you know, yeah, you, you, may, you may let fly some nuclear weapons, even tactical nu nuclear weapons, but you're going to pay a terrible price. You're going to destroy your country and your life. You, you, will, never, you will never be able to do anything again. Just one bomb. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and it's hard to believe that any human being who has gotten as far as he's gotten would destroy the world. I mean, it's a logical possibility. I wouldn't diminish that possibility, but I would, I would say, how, how serious do we take it? How does a democracy play this kind of um, strategy against a, 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 wise, a wise guy? I'll call him a wise guy. 
uh, like put. Well, we've been talking about, thinking about, and making treaties over the mutual, um, mutually assured destruction or MAD proposition that's been been uh, posted so that to describe the stymie that we all thought that we were in. And that stymie is that they, they're nuclear, we're nuclear too, and so are other countries around the world. And that I wanted to, to ask about, in, in Putin's thinking about moving on this and threatening the world with his nukes, how did he get out of that stymie position and 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 threaten what how is being in that mad stymie position allowing him to think he he can use this as blackmail do you, maybe tim does that make any sense to you i'm just kind of questioning how well, i mean when you're not dealing with a full deck of cards you could think anything you want and jay jay inferred to it that you know you got a psycho a pathological uh, you know individual on the other side of the table so i mean and as Jay suggested, you either fall for it or you don't. I mean, here's what Putin said. I mean, talk about stamping your feet. He said, um, any country interfering with Ukraine will be met with a lightning fast response from Moscow. Uh, OK, so guess what? You have 43 nations uh, that have been interfering in Ukraine. Uh, we've been doing it since February 24th. Now, the, the amount of interference is going to ratchet up. Uh, we're giving them, you know, Ukraine offensive weapons instead of defensive weapons. So guess what? We've been in a fear in Ukraine. So what is this little comment from Putin, recent comment? Um, what are we supposed to do with that? And I suggest Jay has the right answer. Ignore it. Um, uh, yeah. You know, Go ahead. well, and then, you know, we have the U United Nations Secretary General meeting with Putin yesterday. And, uh, you know, I listened to that interview and he basically said Putin agrees in in all theory about allowing a corridor uh, for the you know for the um, the citizens to get out of uh, Maripol. Well, great. He, uh, Putin did, so he agreed to that before, and what did he do? He put them on a bus and and sent them into Russia to be used as hostage uh, negotiation chips um, to get prisoners out of you know out of Ukraine. So he's using them either as uh, hostage chips, or he's using them as uh, spies to go back into Ukraine. So why would you believe this man? And so the 43 nations have to account for that and to say, what is his word worth? And if anyone is going to start threatening the world with mad, uh, mutual assured destruction, maybe they should get mad and take him out. Well, that's uh, interesting. Thank you. Um, if, if Putin who has not been diagnosed as, the, as um, the miscreant that he is, whatever his projections and all of his, stand, his, his statements uh, indicate that he is off his rocker, but there's no diagnosis. The Russian people are still satisfied with him in that position. So why is it that he continues to not get to the conclusion. So he does, he's not working, as you say, at the logic. Like the first step is I shoot my missiles off and then they shoot their missiles back at me. So that's a pretty basic uh, stimulus response thing, Jay. So how is it that he stepped aside from that? Does that mean that he believes we will do nothing, we as in the West? Does that mean he's so pompous and egocentric that he doesn't believe he could be taken down? Jay, what do you think about where he's coming from on that side of it? That he can prance around and do this blackmail with no, no consequences. I want to go back to the beginning of your question. You know, I don't think he's crazy. I don't think that Trump is crazy either. And by the way, they're, you know, they really have a lot of similarities. And if you want to know what Trump would do in a second term, watch Putin. Putin, yeah, Putin is is a playbook for him. Great point. Um, always was, um, but you know I don't think I don't think he's crazy. He's just you know pathological. Just because you're pathological doesn't mean you're crazy. He, you know he's not on on pills. He's not about my view. He's not about to wreck the world. It's not mutually assured destruction. Um, that the Cold War mentality really doesn't apply 
We're not there anymore. We're in a different place. Um, and Putin, Putin has a purpose. Okay, it, it's a purpose that changes, as as any good tactician. You know, you see what the situation is. You look at the environment. You keep on tuning up and changing. You know what you're doing and where you're going, but you always have a general direction. And we can figure out what that is, can't we? He wants part, at least part of Ukraine. All of it, he can get that. He wants, um, you know, other countries, and that's being revealed now. His, uh, you know, cutting off the gas uh, in in Poland and what was it, um, Bulgaria, um, and his, uh, his moving troops around in in um, uh, various countries around Ukraine. He's got troops there right now, and he controls puppet states in those places right now. And he has he has his spies and agents and propaganda machines working for money in a variety of places around Ukraine. He's already involved in a hybrid war. Uh, so <clears throat> he's got a plan. The plan is to move the boundary west as far as he can get. That's what the plan is. Uh, so I, so I, I think, um, you know, that ex to me, that explains it all. And he, and he miscalculated. I think the, uh, the national news is national press, uh, at least the uh, the Times and the Washington Post are right um, to say that he miscalculated. He thought that the EU would fall apart. He thought he could scare Poland and he, and he could stare, scare all of Western Europe. Um, but it hasn't really worked out that way for him. Um, and so that's a surprise for him. And maybe it's a surprise for us. It's, a, it's probably a surprise for Biden. Um, but it, it worked. And Biden has, at least up to this point, don't know how sustainable it is. He's held a coalition together. In fact, I would say, uh, you know, the Lloyd Austin trip has improved the coalition. It has brought the coalition together. It has committed them to more and more aggressive action, um, you know, uh, every day. And this is terrific because now going back to your original question, and it seems like to me is that uh, is that Putin has been, what do you want to call it? To some limited extent, he's been neutralized because we now understand him better. We have our own game going, and it's very desperate that he moves troops into these surrounding countries, uh, that he cuts off the gas in two or three of them, um, that he makes these threats about nuclear war, that he trots out these, these um, what do you want to call it, the civilian weapons. All these things are slightly desperate. Um, but I think the, his 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 point, his the ultimate um, uh, view of it is is clear, and and our point should be no, you can't. You're a two year old, and we don't buy it, and we are bigger and stronger and more long lasting than you are. Well, the, that's a good point. We are um, the U.S. isn't saying that as strongly as is the Ukrainian president, who says that. There is no giveaway of an inch of Ukrainian territory. Okay. That's what Biden said. And Biden too is taking because that's what's no, but actually said. I take that back. Biden said if you if you venture on NATO storm, no, not NATO. Even one inch. That's oh yeah, yeah. Biden that's said. right. On on NATO. But what Zelensky is saying is he's not giving up anything. The Ukrainians are not giving up any of that land or any of those territories that that um the Russians have taken over. So so we're at another stymie place here. So what I wanted to go to is to um, to ask for um, opinions on in a complete stymie like this, the first one, the, 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 the mad stymie, he's gone beyond that and we've done nothing. The Ukrainians have made it perfectly clear that they have their outcome and that's the only one they will accept. And so what where do we go in strategy and tactics as um, the West or the U.S. trying to support um, uh, Zelensky and the Ukrainians? Um, Tim, what are you thinking about? How in the world can the strategy be reviewed to become more powerful? Well, I think that that occurred today. Oh, you and it do? occurred today rather than giving commitments of 800 million, 700 million here and there. Um, the President of the United States, and I think Congress, has acknowledged that this is going to be a longer-term um, conflict, atrocities against humanity, genocide. 
that this is going to go on for a long time. President Biden has asked Congress for $33 billion, not 700 or 800 million, but 33 billion. Uh, that's a whole lot of commitment. That is the next step to communicate to Putin that we're, in, we're, in, we're all in. And um, also Congress approved an old World War II um, Lend-Lease Act. Oh yeah. Up to $50 billion Lend-Lease to Ukrainian, in addition to the 33 billion. So we're potentially looking at $88 billion to tell Putin, you're in for a long haul here. And um, I think that is the next step. Uh, Germany came in and said, uh, the vice chancellor of Germany said, we'd have to try the unrealistic to break from Russian gas. Okay, so now Germany's acknowledging that this is getting, you know, this has gone too far and we're going to have to take the, the bitter pill, swallow it and say no to Russian oil and gas. Once Germany does it, the rest of Europe will follow. They're not there yet, but they're getting there. So these are the next steps that your question um, is asking. Okay, and what you're pointing out is a more sanctions on gas and oil. So that's kind of been in the deal all along that Russia knew they were gonna get these sanctions and Putin did Well, too. no, he didn't know it because it's slow to come. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think Putin thought this was gonna come at all. Well, I'm interested. Uh, Jay's right, he, you know, the Times and the Post accurately have, has written that he under, you know, he miscalculated completely. And now he's trying to dig himself out of it by being the two-year-old that he is. Yeah, there's, a, there's a move in Congress now to sell the assets, the sanctions froze. So there's yeah. a lot of Russian assets in this country, in the banks and so forth, uh, that have been frozen and are not going anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, my suggestion <clears throat> a week or two ago was uh, the lawyers who would represent the families of the victims in Ukraine probably have a good cause of action. Uh, to sue and get judgments against Russia, against any of the oligarchs involved, against the general, whoever. Um, but take those assets, you know, lay a judgment on those assets, collect against those assets, because it's billions and billions. It's not yeah. a little amount of money. You know, but why should the, the taxpayers move in, move in Congress right now is to sell those assets and take the proceeds and use the proceeds to defend Ukraine. That's right. still more money, Tim. Right. And yeah, I, also, I agree, Jay. Like, and uh, that's also to rebuild, to set that money aside, yeah. to also reinvest. But the question here is, have has the U.S. and the West actually changed the strategy from the, the timid uh, and wariness of Putin's threat about the nuclear war, the nuclear rocket that he's going to send? So have we now, has Biden led into stepping forward into a more aggressive stance that may go beyond what it is that Putin is saying? If there's anything, he's not liking this. The, the, he's calling the arming of Ukraine. He's called out that that is getting close to his red line. So what, what do you think is going on there, Tim? Are we, well, are we I, I did previously said that he stepped up from 800 million to 33 billion plus another 50 billion in Lend-Lease programs. So um, short of putting NATO boots in Ukraine, which he's not gonna do, uh, and I don't think he's going to support a, a, fly, a fly zone um, freeze, uh, I think Biden is doing everything he can, plus working with the EU and NATO to say, hey, look, um, if, if, if you can't get oil and gas from Russia, the United States will step up will step up production. We, we don't like to do that because we're trying to cut back on fossil fuel production, but we're in a time of proxy war. We're in a time of war. So there's gonna be some pain, but let us help you with our, our gas and oil supplies and try to supplement that which you're going to uh, lose from Russia. Well, okay, now, but does that jeopardize the West in terms of Putin's reacting with his blackmail? Is, is no, it doesn't it, jeopardize it. it. It puts us in partnership. It well, puts us he, in partnership with the EU. Um, we're all together in this. And yes. that means we all have to share some pain. Yeah, and, not talking about the sanctions. Absolutely take everything away from and on all the money here in this country. Well, I'm, I'm talking, talking, about, about, I'm talking about taxpayer dollars paying for this war. And I agree with Jay's comment is to take those assets frozen and not put the burden on United States taxpayers, but start pulling it from the people who are responsible for this mess. All right, but is but that, is, is that Stephanie, playing I, uh, with 
Russians read like day. You're, you're, I, asking, I, you're asking whether we are still affected by the blackmail. And the answer is, if we're putting bigger sanctions on, mm -hmm. if we're sending them more weapons, if we're multiplying the amount of money we're giving them by 10 times or more, more, much more, uh, we're saying, you know, stamp your feet all you want. We're not, we're not impressed anymore. Um, well, we're not you taking you seriously. You can you threaten all you want, but it's sorry. We don't you, buy it. Well, that's what I meant about putting in jeopardy. When is Putin, has Putin been bluffing all along about pushing the button? Yes, the answer is yes. You, is you, that look, what, you know, it's like Trump. You can't believe a word the man says. You know, the United Nations, Guterres went over there, tried to talk to him, and he got, yeah, I, I like that piece in principle. Sure. And he didn't mean a word of it. And Guterres knew that. And that was what got in the press. You can't believe a word he says. You get into a, a discussion to allow uh, humanitarian uh, exits from Maripol, and and next thing you know, he's shooting on, on the people who are trying to escape. Um, so what you have is a liar, and it's part of his M.O. So if he lies about this, sorry, he lies about everything. It's all a lie. And his, his talk about embracing settlement possibilities, that's, that's horse, horse hockey, horse hockey. Um, and, and it always will be. You can't, you can't trust the man, and we have learned that. And having learned that, we don't treat anything he says as 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 serious. Well, it's not going to change. How will we? You know, it's the old story. How do you know? How do you know when Vladimir Putin is lying? <clears throat> he's moving his lips. <laughs> and and how do you know when he's not lying? You don't. All right. Well, Jay, do you agree that 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 we are stepping over into uh, pulling, uh, you know, the bluff? If if it was a bluff that Putin is going to nuke us, I mean, are we now opening up the West to be nuked? Because how would well, this you, is an? You keep asking the same think. question, Stephanie. Well, I'm trying to say the premise he came in on that Putin came in on this whole thing was that he had the nukes and he was going to use them. That's how he was going to control the whole world. He doesn't just want Ukraine. We all knew that. There's two questions it. here. One is, is he going to use the nukes in accordance with his threat? Exactly. Okay, the and smarter guys than us who have been looking at that question for a month. And their answer is, he's not. And, I, and I don't think we can sit here and speculate on whether he is or is not. Uh, we, don't, we don't really know for sure, yes. As I said before, he... Logically, a logical possibility is he could destroy the world. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to you have to take a risk to save the world. Um, and uh, the people in Europe, you know, the Western coalition, they have understood that the world is at an inflection point. We can't let this man get away with it. It's so outrageous. We must contain him. And if that means taking a risk, we take a risk. Well, um, all right, Tim. Our uh, is that kind of a risk okay to take in a democracy with the people not knowing? I mean, who's the input is only from the top? I mean, that was the case with Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Truman made that decision with his own group. Now, is this the same situation where Biden has actually opened us up to having something like this happen? What do you think? And has he checked with any? I mean, where, where's the people's voice? Well, he's the commander in chief. We've elected him as the commander in chief, despite what half the country thinks that is a, he wasn't legitimately elected. He's mm -hmm. the commander in chief of all, all, all military forces. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, yeah, he has a job and responsibility to react in kind, should there be any launch, that'll be the end of the world. But to answer your, what you're really getting at is, should we kowtow to everything Putin is stamping his feet about because he says he has a button and he can push it at any time he wants. Well, so can we. So that yeah. is mutual destruction. And we've been in that world for over 70 years now. Yeah. So, so OK, so guess that's... what? If, mm -hmm. if, 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 if Putin really is at the edge of, of, of you know, destroying the world, so much is better my comment that he needs to be taken out. OK, if, if this is really true, that we are that close to, to um, the, him launching nukes against um, 
either limited or against the United States or the, uh, the NATO for, uh, countries, then altogether he is unbridled, uncontrolled, a mad dog. And what do you do with a mad dog? You have to put well, it down. Okay, but how do you take him out? Same thing with the Korea, North Korea. I'm pretty sure his generals are going, uh, you know, we're not really going to make first strike here because you want the dumbass or you want Kiev or you want uh, interest in Poland or, or Moldova or you, uh, you know, uh, sorry, but he also has military generals that he's going to have to answer to on these on these topics. And I'm sure they're not happy about him uh, saber rattling the nuclear uh, button. Well, as I understand it, the nuclear button that he has is is a Nagasaki or a Hiroshima bomb. OK, it's like that. So it's it's not going to eradicate the U.S., but it would eradicate. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand no, how no. that works. Uh, you don't understand how that works. No, no, Once they go up, they go up. And, and they are far bigger than the, 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 the Well, that's what I've read. Japan. And he doesn't and have there to spend all of them. virtually thousands of them that he has. So Look, if he right. wanted to launch an attack on the United States or the Western world, he has the ability to do it. Hey, hey Stephanie, let me use a, um, an analogy that kids play with. You start with uh, water squirt guns. Right, and right. then when that doesn't work, you go to a cup of water. When that doesn't go, you go to a pan of water. And when that doesn't work, you bring out the garden hose and the whole living room is trashed. Well, okay, Tim so bottom line is, once you start unleashing nukes, that's pretty much the beginning of the end. And well, so I, I don't think the world's going to let that happen. Well, I was just, because how are we not going to let it happen that if he wants to launch one nuke on D.C., or New York, this, or whatever. What? Well, how are we going to know he can do that? That is the blackmail. There's no way to get to what, him. What are you well, saying, Stephanie? You seem yeah, to be saying, I'm saying that you're that, really, really concerned about this, that you believe he will do it, and that it will be the end of the world. But what are you saying about the steps we should take in dealing with his threats? I, I need to hear that from you. Well, yes, that's what I want to hear is from Biden. Well, no, and I need to hear Biden. it from you. Well, from me, I, I want to know that we are in that jeopardy if we're going to do that. If Biden's going to continue to step over Putin's line, which is a little bit phasey, a little bit uh, wobbly, I think, but and I think put, but Biden's pro process right now is to just push it as much as he can. And I'd like to hear know that that's what we're doing is we're nudging it, nudging it, nudging it so that we get to the place we get to a place where we will know that they will nuke us with one, okay? Or we can assume that we've gone over the line. When is Putin gonna really say, that's it, that's it, that's it, you did it. You're too far over, that's too much, too much of a boon for the Ukrainians, you're giving them too many weapons, I'm not putting up with this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a nuke and, and damage us. Uh, because I, with all of your descriptions of his, his his uh, difficulties. Um, he wouldn't have any problem with that. Just like Stalin didn't have any problem with killing millions of people, so they could wipe out New York City again or D.C. So what okay. I want to know: Does Biden address that? What are our leaders think? Is that okay to take that chance? What do you think, Jay? Disband NATO while you're at it. Is it well, okay for Biden to do what Biden is doing, Stephanie? Is that what you're asking? I'm just wanting to know where, if we're, because I'm facing going back to Washington, D.C. shortly. No. And I'd rather be here if they're going to nuke the East Coast, okay? So I actually have some skin here, okay, in the game. And it has occurred to me. So anyway, that's, what, that's why I'm very interested to hear your opinions on that, because he's not going to launch 5,000 missiles. If you're asking whether what Biden is doing is right, in my opinion, it's right, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. And I want him to do as much right as he can, but I want him to put us on the alert, like DEFCON 8 or whatever, if it's going to tease this guy into action. We've, we've got a live shark on the line. Well, really, gotta... Stephanie, do you really think that would help? Because it would, it would uh, create an emergency situation, and, yeah. and uh, there would be lots of implications. For example, everybody in the country would be terrified. The yep. world would think we are really, really um, mm -hmm. desperate and um, we're mm -hmm. in crisis uh, yeah. and that we're weak. It would be a sign of weakness. Now, what we're talking about is a guy who is trying to project power and strength and threat. 
You don't answer that by uh, projecting weakness, do you? Because then you well, give him options he doesn't even have now. Well, I'd like to see more articles um, about the studies that are being done about what what they call these things there, you know, the predictions on what he might do and what that might be. And I'm sure they're doing that. I'm sure that all of those think techs, tanks and um, all the rest of the, the intelligence groups are, are looking at that. What What is the game here? What's I'm the, sure what's they the have, Stephanie. Game? And as I said early on, you know, they have examined this and they are part of the decision process in, in the mm -hmm. Oval Office. And mm -hmm. they collectively have decided right or wrong. They, I believe they're right. Mm -hmm. uh, that they can't they can't be intimidated when he stamps his feet. Okay. That's their decision and it's based on all the resources available to the president of the United States. Well, I, I'll just say that I'd like to be in the same position of having uh, some knowledge like the Ukrainians had, because the minute somebody said the war has started on the border, look how many people got out of there in like three days. Three million. They knew that they were in jeopardy and they left. OK, so um, and I'm sure that was under advice, et cetera. And I would just like to know that that's what's happening in our administration is they're pre preparing all of these end game and play and plays war games, all the war games. What's what are these war colleges and their war games? What are they saying about this thing? They must have played this scenario out a thousand times. So, hey, cut us in on the deal. Don't Why? you worry. Is that Why? good strategy? Yeah. That's, Does that that's, help in some way? I'm I'm thinking it. Go to DEFCON five and scare the pants off well, everybody. No, no just really have, have a referendum on what we should do. He's the commander in chief. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, um, our country and our lives depend on him, and we might as well get behind him, especially when we would agree with him. Oh, I'm certainly behind him and want him. Yes, that the. That 330 million people ought to get together and be of the same mind. No, no, not suggesting him, that. It's not it's gonna work. What, and for him to tell you what, what he's going to no, do. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Not not at all. Work. No, uh, I'm you just have to let him figure out the strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tim, we're gonna have to finish up here. Let's have um a comment, final comment from you, and then Jay, you can close us. Oh, my final comment. Oh boy, oh boy. Hey, you know what? When parents are faced with a child, a toddler that holds his breath, there are some parents that will go, oh my God, he's turning, he's turning red. And they, they, they fall for it. They, they, they pacify the child with whatever what the child wants. Mm -hmm. And then there's the more savvy parents that go, ah, they'll get over it. And they ignore the child and guess what? The child gets over it. Putin is that child, that toddler, the holding the breath tantrum that's taking place. Uh, NATO and the United States are the savvy parents are gonna go, He'll get over it. Mm -hmm. So don't be don't be intimidated by a child that holds his breath, and in the, the meantime, he's committing atrocities against humanity, genocide, and the world stands idly by to go. Gee, I don't I don't want to upset that child. No, that's um, as Jay said more than once uh, at the Holocaust Museum. Why the War Department wouldn't bomb Auschwitz? We don't want to make Herr Hitler any angrier. Well, too late. Right. We're no, there. It's, well, it's not that. It's that. It, what is the plan? What are the options? That's what I'm interested in. It's just like we knew a the lot. Options of is meet and, force with force. Right. Yeah. Stay get stay boots out of Ukraine, right. but just, do exactly what Joe Biden's doing. Ratchet up from 800 million to 33 billion, and uh, and, and get them the weapons and, they need, and be damned with defensive weapons. Give them defensive and offensive weapons. And, I don't and care the, if if Biden says. You'll see lightning fast response from Moscow. Who cares? All right. So we're he's bluffing. We're he's bluffing. Yeah, he's holding he's his bluffing. breath. Don't fall for it. Okay. That's where we are now, Jay. We're, you know, we're not, we're calling this bluff. Okay. Cause we're inching up and we're nudging all forward to do what we can do for this country to save it from annihilation and genocide. So last comment, Jay. It's a poker game. Exactly. We have to it's recognize it as a poker game. And yeah, and we have to support the leader, and we have to be together on this. Our mm -hmm. greatest fear, our greatest risk, is to have internal dissension and not support the leader. Mm -hmm. Is at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Good point. Really good point. So, um, okay. Well, uh, we're out of time uh, from what I know about the time here for the show. 
And um, thank you very much for your discussion and your speculations and analyses, and they're all very uh, informative. So this uh, show is on every week on Thursday, so we'll look forward to seeing you next week. And um, Jay and Tim, thanks. And thank you, audience of viewers, for tuning in. I'm Stephanie Dalton, your host. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.